Hey there, I'm out shooting today with the Fuji X-H2S in the Sigma 18 to 35. Now, if you've been following along on this channel for a while, you might remember that I picked up the X-H2S right when it came out. And funny enough, it was probably almost two years ago, seems like forever ago. And so I didn't wind up keeping the camera at the time because I just had other cameras that could do the same job. Now, at this point in time, I have fewer cameras and I really kind of try to lean into the Fuji X-H2S as part of my workflow and to test it out and use it and sort of experience the system. You know I'm a complete camera nerd and I like to try everything, but I'm really excited about the Fuji. Now, I'm out today. It is a beautiful spring day, early spring day here in North Carolina. It's a little bit chilly, but nice and sunny. And I wanted to try to capture some of the beauty, beautiful colors that come out of this camera. And so hopefully I can find some cool colors. It's a little bit early in spring, it's mid-March. So I'll see what I can do. Anyways, I wanna talk a little bit about why I picked this up and my thoughts coming back to it and that sort of stuff. But first of all, let's get back to shooting a little bit more and showing some more images. So I love these planters here. And what I find really amusing for me personally, I see these flowers here. This, this is actually kale, just flowering. I don't know, I find that funny as a former farmer. All right, so there's two geese over here. And of course, I don't have a long lens. I got an 18 to 35. But what I'm gonna do here is see if how the animal autofocus works on these two geese over here. And I'll have to come back and try this a different time with a longer lens. It has definitely got the box on the goose's head. So overall, I really enjoyed shooting with the X-H2S and getting reacquainted with it. And I thought the images that came out of the camera were also awesome, which you already just saw. So for all that, like I said, I was shooting that on the X-H2S with the Sigma 18 to 35, and I don't have it on my camera because I'm actually shooting on it right now. That lens has been getting a lot of work for me lately. In addition to that, I was using the Fringer or Fringer EFFX Mark II adapter. So they also have a Mark III and they also have the Pro version, which has like a control ring on it. But I opted for the older 
more simple one because it was a little bit cheaper, but it seemed to work really well. So as I got reacquainted with the camera and went out and shot with it, I want to give you some of my thoughts and impressions with the camera. So first of all, let's talk about image quality. You obviously saw a bunch of images already at the beginning of this video. Sharpness, this camera is very, very sharp. Of course, this is a 6.2K sensor and I was shooting in the 4K 16 by nine long op and that is oversampled from the 6.2K so you get a lot of detail and sharpness. Now I decided to not shoot open gate for this video. Uh, it is really cool, I have used in the past but I, I knew I was gonna get a 16 by nine image to put out to YouTube so you can shoot open gate and then you can then uh, reframe and all that stuff but that's what I shot in and you know the sharpness and detail and clarity is just really really nice. Of course I was using the 18 to 35 which is a very sharp lens but it did not disappoint. In terms of the colors, Fuji is well known for having really nice colors and I have to say that you know for me personally I have shot on a lot of different cameras from a lot of different manufacturers with a lot of different lenses and all that kind of stuff and when you sort of take some images out of a camera and you go to color grade it, you always get a sense right away what's going on here. And I have to say, the Fuji colors are really cool. And every camera, every lens, every everything has a look to it. And of course, the Fuji is no different. But what I like are the colors are very vibrant, they're very even, and they're just very rich. Now, this is Fuji interpreting colors, right? So uh, like I said, everything has a look to it. But what I noticed is that the saturation of most of the colors are pretty even. I know a lot of times with some other manufacturers, when you're grading and you're pushing saturation to the image, certain colors will kind of bleed out right away, that they'll be like oversaturated. But I noticed that the colors and the saturation were pretty even throughout the, uh, the image on the Fuji. So I really like the colors, they're very pleasing. I did see a little bit of a magenta color shift and I'll talk about that a little bit later. In terms of dynamic range, this camera is unbelievable. There was a ton of dynamic range. There weren't any shots where I was really thinking, wish I had more dynamic range. I was really able to look into the highlights and the shadows in the same shot with very little noise. So it has a great amount of dynamic range. I'd say it's comp you know competitive with a lot of the other cameras on the market. In terms of stabilization, the Fuji X-H2S does have IBIS. It has a physical sensor shift stabilization system. And I was using that in combination with the boost mode for all the shooting that I was doing that you saw in this video so far. Now the 18 to 35 does not have stabilization and I do want to say that I didn't apply any stabilization in post so all the footage that you saw was handheld footage. A lot of it was me holding the camera up to my eye to take the shot to get a third point of contact but there's a few shots where I was just sort of holding it in front of me as well. It worked really well and often when I'm making these videos I do apply a little bit of stabilization in post but I didn't at all so you could see what it does and I have to say I was really impressed with the stabilization especially with a non-stabilized lens. In terms of autofocus, I didn't really test it very much. Besides that one clip where I was filming the goose, I had it in manual focus and I just been shooting manual focus more and more often. So I didn't really test it out. I know that autofocus is something that people are really critical about with Fuji. I'll probably have to test it out more in the future because I know there's been a lot of firmware updates to this camera since I did have it a few years ago. Now I do want to mention that when I was using manual focus, I was using focus peaking. I had it set to high and it's still a little bit weak. Sometimes it is tough to tell when you're trying to do manual focus when you're using peaking. So I just want to let you guys know that it is very usable, but it is, uh, you know, it, it was a struggle at times because I wish it was a little bit stronger. Next, I want to talk a little bit about getting proper exposure and grading the image coming out of the X-H2S. So I shot everything in F-Log2, and if you don't know this, the base ISO is 1250 in F-Log2, and this definitely takes some getting used to because most of us are used to shooting at a base ISO of like 640 or maybe 800. So you just have to be a little bit more careful with your exposure. You need to stop down the lens a little bit or add more ND. For me personally, I'm usually using a one to five stop variable ND filter. So I'm either gonna have to stop down the lens a little bit more uh, or bring more ND with me and those sorts of things. Now, generally when I am shooting outside in a run and gun situation, and I've made several videos about how to expose and color grade a bunch of different cameras, I use the histogram to judge exposure. And what I do is I basically bring up the exposures as high as I can to not clip the highlights and then I just back it down a little bit for safety. Now this will preserve as much information in the shot as possible and then when you go into grading you can make it look however you want. You're trying to capture as much information as possible by just not clipping the highlights because you can't recover those once you clip them. Now when I did this on the X-H2S the image definitely looks a little bit overexposed on the screen both the LCD and in the EVF so I did back it down a little bit more because I was a little bit nervous when I was out shooting but I didn't clip the shot, uh, any of the images, uh, any of the highlights, and there was still plenty of headroom in there when I went to go grade it. So 
I, I get to practice a little bit more. Like it, with every camera, you have to practice until you get it sorted out in terms of exposure. But you know, the shadows are really clean, and I think that has a lot to do with how much dynamic range this camera has. I want to talk a little bit more about F Log Two. Now, I think there's a little bit of confusion, or you know, a little bit of clarifying to do with this. So, F Log Two is actually in the BT 2020 color space, and 2020 is larger than 709. Most of us are editing in 709 and delivering in 709. So. Fuji actually provides four technical LUTs, and I will leave the link to that in the description. It is free, you can download them. Now, the one I used was the F-Log2 F-Gamut to F-Log2 BT709, which is awesome because I still get a log image out, but it's in the correct color space. So it's still you know very easy to grade, and I get to work with it like log footage, but there it's converted to the right color space. So you don't get any funky colors. It's a really cool LUT that they provide. I did notice there was a little bit of magenta shift, but it was very easy to fix with a slider and you know the image was corrected very easily. The three other LUTs that they provide, they give you F-Log2 to Eterna, to external bleach bypass and to a 709 YDR. So as I said, I'll leave that link down below if you wanna check that out, but just having that conversion to the right color space and then be able to Grade it like normal log footage, super easy to work with, and I found that the grading was really smooth and was really easy to get the look I wanted out of the uh, out of the log footage. In terms of the ergonomics and the build quality and stuff, I don't mean this to be a full review, but it has a nice deep grip. It's a fairly small camera, which is really nice to pack away, but it's not too small where it's awkward in your hand. I don't love the materials it's made out of, but overall, I do really enjoy shooting with it. The LCD screen and the EBF are fantastic, and you can actually see the LCD screen outside. <laughs> I know that's funny to say, but a lot of cameras, you really struggle to see the screens outside, and this does a great job, and the EBF is also great. So as a videographer, I love video focus hybrid cameras, and the X-H2 is definitely one of those. I love the fact that it has excellent dynamic range, it has a stacked sensor for quick readouts, so we get the reduced rolling shutter effects that you get in a lot of the other mirrorless cameras, like that jello effect when you're panning or when the subject is moving. You also get open gate recording, which is really handy for reframing, for just different aspect ratios, and also for using higher squeeze anamorphic lenses. But I wish it had a few other things like shutter angle, the ability to jam time code, anamorphic de-squeeze, some of those sorts of things. But overall, I think it has a lot going for it. Now, I'm still trying to decide on which lenses to get for my X-H2S. I'm probably leaning towards some of the newer Fuji Primes, but I will definitely let you know as I get them, I'll probably make some more videos about them. The Sigma 18 to 35 did look pretty awesome on the X-H2S, but I've been using it for a lot of other things. It is a little bit big as well for carrying around. Overall, as I get reacquainted with X-H2S, I'm really happy with it and we're looking forward to shooting with it more and incorporating it in my workflow. So let me know if you have any questions or thoughts down below. I appreciate all of you watching. Hit subscribe if you aren't already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.